took that right down like a man. We well, you know when your country calls, Dave. When yep, your country you do calls, what you can everybody. It's a small price. Taking a glass of water. Uh, listen, congratulations on the the beautiful baby girl. Do you mind us right yeah. off? We show the pictures of the lady. Yeah. This is um, book place. Oh, look at that! There's your beautiful wife, Ilaria. Do I have it right, Ilaria? Ilaria, my Ilaria, wife. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that is Carmen. I'm the only one in the picture they had to airbrush in that picture. No, you yeah. look, you look I mean, fantastic. I pretty young. Yeah. It's pretty good. And a beautiful baby girl. Yeah. Just, oh, look at that. She's very sweet. But she's very like sweet. brand new in that picture just a she's month She's going to be so. three weeks old uh, tomorrow. So oh, my gosh. Is that yeah. right? Well, yeah. she's a beautiful little girl. Yeah, thank you. And we're very lucky. But as you know, um, I was telling someone uh, on this show that how you, uh, you know, you're invisible. You know, you're in the house and... Your wife is there with the nanny and the, her, uh, the housekeeper and her mother and her friends. And I'm, no one even sees me that I'm there anymore. So I'm, uh, I thought about taking off all my clothes and sitting like nude at the breakfast table. And saying, anything, anyone? Yeah. Anyone see anything? I know you, you did that the night I stopped by. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I, that's when I came to your house. I did that at your breakfast table. Oh, that's right. Table. I did it at your house. <laughs> you did it at I my came house. to your house. That's, right. that's, that's right. But you're exactly right. Uh, I, I never quite sure what role I played before my son arrived, but I fell completely off the list when he was born. Yeah, no, it, it is a strange thing. I mean, my, my daughter, my new daughter, she changes every couple of days. She becomes more alert. I mean, she's a little thing, but uh, they do become more alert. But they definitely prefer their mother to you. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I it's think very that lonely. that's probably yeah, it is lonely, it's but lonely. probably a good a good way yeah. for it to be taken care of early on. Yeah. Now this is exciting. I think I would love this. You have a seventeen-year-old daughter and a three-week-old daughter. That's wonderful. Right. I have a seven. Well, <laughs> what I say, seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen-year-old. I have a seventeen-year-old daughter and a three-week-old daughter, and you said that's wonderful. I'll take your word for it. So, <laughs> I'll take your word. Oh, I think I it is wonderful. Robe. Oh, I think it's great. It is wonderful. It's it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> but it's a little. It's. I mean, you don't you don't think about it like you have a a baby and you're uh, uh, 55 years old. I mean, as my friend said to me, I have a friend who's 65. He has a son who's 10. So he had his somebody who was my age, and he said it's great. It's the best thing that ever happened. You just have to make sure that when the child graduates college they go to a, uh, the commencement is held at a wheelchair accessible facility <laughs> and i said okay right. grab bars yeah. and things like what? that <laughs> <laughs> but now but what i'm talking about the excitement here is now for your older daughter she must love having a little baby uh, sister right what's the matter <laughs> my my daughter my older daughter is coming here soon mm -hmm. Uh, to meet our her sister, her half sister, for the first time, and it's I think it's it's weird, you know, my daughter. I mean, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. But my daughter, I'm like, my daughter's 17 and she's modeling Ireland and she flies around the world and does these modeling things. And we're going to hand her this three-week-old baby. So this is your sister. And yeah. rather than chatting about hair and makeup and things, her little sister's going to go, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, and that's going to be it, you know what I mean? You and I are looking at this from <clears throat> two different perspectives. Are we really? I think this will complete a circle. A bond will be created forever now. I think it will be. Yeah, and it's so, so nice. And she will, she will love it. Ireland will lo love the I think girl. she will. No, it's, it's great, but it just, it's weird, that, that, that gap, you know what I mean, that gap. It's, 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 it's unusual. But it does, everything they say, it fills your home with so much love to have a little baby there, doesn't well, it? My, well, y yes, my, uh, well, it makes you focus. But my, the other thing is that, that um, <laughs> you do have to focus. You have sure to you focus. Have to focus. Uh, <laughs> Um, can I get some more water, please? I'm feeling a little parched. No, but my wife is happy. My wife is happy. She's so. Would you see a woman have her first child? Let me see the picture of your wife and your baby. Uh, right again. Do you have it there? Yeah, we have it right here. She looks oh, happy, doesn't man. she? Now my this picture uh, was. This, you didn't run down to Sears and have this done. <laughs> This this is a, like a professional thing. Where no, did... Dave, we took a town car to Sears. And had it done. We didn't <laughs> run down to Sears. We were driven by a driver. But it, <laughs> the, the picture was, was published in a magazine, is that correct? My wife and I decided to uh, sell the pictures to people, which was not like a... a the, always those things bother me, because we, uh, we knew that someone would make money from the picture somehow in that kind of world, in the world of, uh, dare I say it, paparazzi photography. Uh, go ahead. I'll be the one to bring up that subject. 
And, um, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, the, um, but no, we, we, had, we sold the pictures to people and we donated the money to a charity in Spain that my wife is supportive right. of. Yeah, I'll mention, yes. Yeah. No, no, it's, uh, that's a great idea. Now, please mention, mention the charity. Uh, the charity is called RANA, R-A-N-A, -A, in Spain, for abused women. This is a lovely thing. Yeah, so my Very wife nice wanted to do the idea. photographs, and we sold it to them and gave, gave the money. And it was weird for the first couple of weeks to conceal the baby, to hide the baby, uh, uh, so it wasn't photographs because we didn't want to blow the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the benefit of the photography thing. So, you know, like stuffing the baby in a knapsack to go out. And, <laughs> Again, I uh, don't know that this is... the baby is, in your jacket. No, you don't want to... Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. As a, a friend and an admirer, is it, is it once a month? Is it once every six weeks? Is it once every six months? What, what is the cycle? You know what I'm talking about? That I pick up the paper and see you strangling a photographer. <clears throat> how, how often is it? Is it? It seems like it's almost daily, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well, it's almost we'll, daily. We'll get, every get edition into, of the paper yes, has a we'll photo. We'll get into that with Alec Baldwin when we come back. Everybody. Great. You know what I love about him is his, is his singing technique. It's so soulful and so beautiful. And you're such a blues man, really. You know, when you're at that microphone during the break. That is so nice of you to say. I don't think anybody's ever said that about me. You're just sitting I, there going, Ugh! Yeah. Well, I do Ooh. that. Ugh! <laughs> you got that down, man. You're that good. is my technique on the toilet as well. Oh! Oh, I didn't man. say that. God, the family show. For the love of... Oh, baby! Yeah, well, I got that. I say that. All right, Somebody boy. help me boy, out here. Hey, okay. <laughs> right. Now, speaking of uh, music, uh, let's tell people about you, your <laughs> involvement with cl classical music, not just in New York City, but, uh, but all over the United States. Uh, you're the voice of the... New York Philharmonic. New York Philharmonic. On the radio. And yes, we, and we the had, radio. They, they decided they wanted to do a uh, film-related program, and as many people know, uh, like at the Hollywood Bowl, John Mocherry had the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra, and they would do clips of films, you know, John Williams, and they'd play oh, yes. themes from movies, and yes. Superman, and all this other stuff, and Star Wars, and Mocherry uh, was the king of that in L.A., and there are different uh, groups that do that. We're bringing a conductor uh, to play with the Phil. He's going to do a Hitchcock program. And well, that a, would be great. And they're going to have a package of Hitchcock clips, but... Uh, who was... I know the guy. Bernard Herman did a lot of... Bernard music. Herman, right, right. Did a lot of... Uh, we're going to do a lot of Bernard Herman. But the biggest thing was to convince Alan Gilbert, who's the conductor of the Philharmonic, who's the music director, we were really hopeful that Alan would consider doing something, although we didn't think he would. And he agreed, and on the 21st, I think it is, of September, uh, Alan's going to conduct the Philharmonic live to picture to a digital print of 2001 A Space Odyssey. There you go. There Thank you. Go. It's going to be really good. It's going to be beautiful. So we're very excited. And that's when we hear the... Uh the uh, Wagnerian, the dome. What is that? That the big uh, space odyssey. Dun, yeah, but what is the name of the piece? Dun. Also, oh, Space Zarathustra. Zarathustra. Yeah, that's, yeah. Now, uh, you, <coughs> sir, Strauss. are uh, uh, oh, Strauss, not Wagner. Strauss. Yeah. You, you, sir, are a Renaissance man. I, I, and, and, and well, like, thank you very yeah. much, Dave. You and, like, Steve Martin. Steve Martin's like a Renaissance man. You, probably well, I love classical that. music. I really, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that they've asked me to do the radio hosting. I think if uh, I don't keep my name out of the papers, they may fire me pretty soon. But I'm, uh, um, I'm very excited to do that program. And oddly enough, also, you're going back to the way music used to be in films, which is it was played live. That's right. A hundred years ago, when films were first being screened in theaters, or 80, 90 years ago, uh, they, they were silent, and someone live played the piano or the uh, organ and so forth. I, I worry about this, and Paul can support me on this. You can certainly support me on this. E every 10 or 15 years or so, you hear about uh, union negotiations with Broadway musicians. And the size of the orchestra for musicals and other presentations, it diminishes and, and thinner. diminishes and diminishes. And that's, that's too bad. I, I would hope that it, it is never just eliminated entirely. Well, they're going to have, uh, Alan,
Alan uh, agreed, and we were very grateful, because they have a lot of requests to do these kinds of ancillary programs. And Alan agreed, and they're going to play, uh, you know, the, the full orchestra are going to play live at, at uh, Avery Fisher Hall. So that, it's really That'll exciting. be delightful. Now, let, let's show uh, the pictures I was alluding to earlier. And, and I don't want to upset you, but... No. <laughs> this, and I want to remind people, this is not from a movie. This is, this is you and a guy on the street outside of a coffee shop. And this is not Brokeback Mountain 25 years later. <laughs> what, to, what can we learn from that photo, Al Alec? That the stop and frisk policy is working in New York. <laughs> it's working. Now, now is it... I find it, uh, in the beginning I was worried. When I would see these things, I said, oh, that's a whole other... But now I kind of find it entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> that was my goal all along. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> that's so great. But, now I understand this, because they, they were baiting you, they were chasing your wife who had just given birth... Chased her into a store. Yes. But I will tell you something, and that is that in Los Angeles, I don't know the details of this, but like Halle Berry or uh, like a bunch of people who live out there, we're, we're trying to get them to have a new uh, law to have paparazzi not be able to photograph your child. That's what I'm really worried about. Most of the people you deal with stay several feet away from you. They're long lens. They want to get pictures of you. There's really little you can do about that. But people who like jump out from behind a car and almost physically assault you, I think that there's something that they want to have happen, which most of the time, well, let's put it this way, here's my favorite moment. This is a great New York moment, and you'll appreciate this. And it's, 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 it's funny and not funny. These cops come, these cops come to this scene, that moment, and this one cop is interviewing the guy, and another cop's talking to me, and this goes on for like 45 minutes, and the one cop walks up out of the side of his mouth and goes, you know, Mr. Bull, when I gotta say, you know, sometimes they say in the paper that you have trouble controlling yourself. But I gotta tell you, I think you control yourself real well, because imagine what you would do to this guy if you could do whatever you wanted to do to him. <laughs> and I think you show tremendous self-control. <laughs> yeah, and just remember that. No, no, but I'm saying that kind of thing is not a good thing. I would never say that's a good thing or whatever. But sometimes it's like they... Uh, I had a guy, and I will tell you this is a fact, that same guy out in front of my house was uh, following us and he backed up and tripped and fell on a baby in a stroller of one of my neighbors and sat on the baby so we were like we had had it with this guy so i stopped and i yeah. frisked him yeah no but <laughs> it's when you're i, I mean you in terms of protecting uh, the, the mother of your newborn your your wife your family uh, it's uh, you can't help but react and and you know what are you gonna do uh, I I don't know but it, it, no no charges were filed nobody was arrested no because they went to uh, uh, they asked the other photographers there that one photographer said ask them what happened and the police wouldn't ask them what happened and they corroborated my story <laughs> that he was the only one who didn't give us any distance and he was very kind of confront confrontational right. and I mean listen it's a drag it's something I don't want but to this happen. guy got exactly what he wanted I am an idiot insofar as I do. There you go. That's, you acquiesced. You got. He got everything he wanted. Shot right yes, there, sure. I think, right now. Now, I, I, it occurred to me uh, well, about a year ago, and I owe you an apology. You and I were coming out of an event in Washington D.C., and there was a group of these uh, professional uh, autograph people, right. and they were going, eh, eh, eh. and I said, "Oh, leave me alone." I said, "What about this guy?" And then I point to you. You're standing right next to me. <laughs> I'm not thinking, and you shot me a look like, hey, dumbass. <laughs> Did I? No, and rightly so. And then I I'm, thought, ha I'm happy to be thrown under the bus by you. <laughs> no. I don't... And then I thought, oh, my God, what am I talking about? I'm uh, trying to feed you to the, uh, the lions there, and you look me like, uh, uh, get off gum on my shoe. But I'll tell you another thing, is that when you think about it... <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, well, I accept your apology. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But anyway, you know as well as I do that in this business there are people, you have many appointments with the press. You go to events, you walk a red carpet, you do the step and repeat, I do your show. I mean, you're available. So, I mean, let's, who, who's kidding who? It's not like I'm Howard Hughes, like I'm in some hotel hiding out from people. I mean, I'm out there and I do things and talk to the press. So I don't feel like these guys are... Uh, are, are deprived in any way when it comes to photographing yeah. me or whatever. So it's yeah. it's unfortunate. I'm not happy that that happened. But well, you know. now now with with your little girl, 
uh, and as she grows older and older and older, you have to really redouble your efforts and, and, and be uh, uh, observant and, and cautionary and precautionary. Well, the question becomes also, I mean, this is really a, a fact of life in this business, as you know, with people, and that is, do you decide to move to Los Angeles where everything is behind a gate? You're in a car, your feet never touch public land. You can leave your house. <laughs> never. Am I right? You, you, you're in Los Angeles, you get out of your house, you go in your car in your garage, and you drive up San Vicente, and you bank around the veteran building, and you shoot into Century City, and you pull into a parking lot. You go up, you pick up a huge check. You go back down into the valley parking. You drive over to Westwood, you put ballot. You, you never interact with the public. Yeah, the and in New York, property. as they say, you're walking the streets right of New York. Right out in there. And, yeah. Millionaires and whores, shoulder to shoulder in New York. This is a great idea. How did this happen, Alec? You have a show, uh, 10 p.m. is an hour long, half hour. Hour. Hour long show wow. on MSNBC every Friday night uh, coming up soon. And uh, I'm guessing that you just interview one, maybe two uh, good friends of yours or people you understand or know, ad admire in music, show business, whatever. Uh, how did that happen? Well, the podcast that you very graciously mm -hmm. did with us. Here's the thing. We did the show thing. Here's the thing for WNYC and public radio. And we decided we wanted to try to see if we could do it for TV, which is tough to make it as intimate, you know. Like if you see, uh, I mean, there are talk shows that it's a desk and it's a band and it's an audience. And then there's Charlie Rose, which is a very intimate kind of a setting. And we decided to try to do that kind of thing because uh, I really enjoyed doing the podcast. I liked it a lot. So we're going to do it for MSNBC yeah. Fridays well, at 10. It's a wonderful uh, for people to know the podcast. And then they also, I, I was talking to somebody who heard one of them on the BBC. Did you realize that they were being aired on the BBC? No. Yep. Yep. Some of them are. Friend of mine in London. So I got to make a call. You please do. Right. Uh, well, we, but I really, uh, um, uh, they, they told, they came to me and said, "Did I want to do it just yeah. once a week, Fridays at ten? And I said, "Sure." Yeah. Oh, and the other thing, damn, I forgot to mention the documentary that you shot a year ago at Con, and it was uh, at the festival this year at Con, and we've never even talked about it. We went to uh, James Toback who is a very well-regarded screenwriter and director in, in, in the movie business. He wrote Bugsy with uh, Warren Beatty and so forth. And Jimmy Toback and I went to Cannes, and we, we were ostensibly pitching a film at the market theater based money, but we were really making a documentary about the marketing of a film. And there's a kind of a stereo track. It's the marketing of the film, and it's an homage to Cannes as the great film festival. And, and then you brought it back, and and, 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 and we it, screened it at Cannes this year. How, how did called, it go? Then did they? They love, loved it. They, they, they we it. were so overjoyed because the, the the center of the film, in terms of its appreciation of cinema, the movie's called Seduced and Abandoned, and it's why we in the movie business, when you make movies, you are seduced and abandoned over and over again. Uh, we always say the movie business is like the worst girlfriend you ever had, but you keep coming back, you know. And, uh, the, and, and Jimmy and I did the film, and the four kind of pillars of the film are Scorsese, Coppola, Polanski, and Bertolucci, who we interviewed about what the meaning of cinema and film in our lives are. Now, did they know really that this was a, a kind of a, a send-up of the process? When no, with them it wasn't a send-up. It wasn't. You know, when we went to pitch the film to the, to the, to the, uh, uh, the investors, that was kind of a semi-send-up because we really didn't have a script. And, hey, listen, if they gave us the money, we would have, uh, we would have written the script. So any, anyway, now it will be... Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like the producer. It, 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 will be, it will be seen on... Uh, it's on HBO. HBO, very, very... Uh, we're very grateful they picked up the film, and it's going to air... On, it airs on HBO on October 28th. Oh, you got the world by the tail, my friend. Yeah. Congratulations on the new baby. Thank you. Alec Baldwin, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Tony Collette, everybody.